is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmuth. A battle is intensifying in Orange County between Mayor Teresa Jacobs and a group of community members pushing for more money for at-risk kids. The Children's Trust Campaign, led by longtime children's advocate Dick Batchelor, wants voters to decide whether they're for a tax increase to generate the money. But Mayor Jacobs doesn't want the proposal on the November ballot. This morning, Mr. Batchelor will break down that proposal and why he feels the time to act is now. First, give us an overview of this proposal mm -hmm. and what it could ultimately do for children of Orange County. Okay. First of all, the campaign called Children's Trust, and basically what we're trying to do is get the mayor and county commission to put on the ballot the question as to whether or not the voters would like to vote for an increase of a half a mil property tax, mm -hmm. which would fund children's programs. In fact, it would generate about $58 million a year, every year, for 10 years, which would be the life of the proposed tax. And basically, uh, in Orange County, right now we've got 21,000 children without health care. There were 14,000 children abused in Orange County last year. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, 3,400 children on the waiting list for early childhood education. We've got 7,000 children in the public school system who are homeless. So we have all of these documented needs but we don't have the funding. Let me hasten to point out that I think uh, the mayor and the commission in Orange County have done laudable things for children. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the fact is, the the unmet needs are so great. We want a chance to have a funding mechanism that dedicates these monies for children and generates substantially more money than the county is putting in the current budget. And what could happen if that money does not? get approved and right. what, what could ultimately happen to those kids? Well, the, the fact is that a number of them today just go without health care. I mean, uh, 21,000 children have no health care. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we've got programs like Shepherd's Hope, which are volunteer programs that see thousands of these uh, people a year who are working poor. They are not Medicaid eligible, they're working poor. Uh, the, one of the issues that really bothers me is the whole issue of the children who have mental health needs, particularly in today's environment. There are, we're talking four and five and six-year-old children who have been identified. They have mental, mental health needs, but we don't have sufficient funding for those. Now, we know empirically if we don't re uh, rescue these children and provide them counseling services that the issue is exacerbated. We also know that if you look at these children who were abused, if we don't offer them refuge and rehabilitate them, mm -hmm. we know exactly what will happen to the vast majority of those children. They will grow up to abuse others. And so that we will, we're spending the money today, but we're spending it on the back end in mm -hmm. juvenile justice, in the criminal justice system, in the court system. And our argument is spend the money on the front end, you know, prevent these things from happening. Mm -hmm. So over the long run, as far as the taxpayer is concerned, it's more, it's, it's better for the taxpayer to invest the money on the front end of these children rather than waiting until the problem worsens and have to spend the money on the back end. So ultimately, that, that, that tax increase, for the folks at home, what would that mean to their paychecks? How much are we talking, a month, good a year? Good question, very good question. If you look at our kind of the average home value is about $250,000. Mm -hmm. So if that were the case with your home, and you also have a $50,000 homestead exemption, so if you back that out, it will cost about $9 a month for the average mm -hmm. homeowner in Orange County to generate $58 million in new money for children. And by the way, that $58 million can also draw down state and federal match. So it, it could be as high as 70 to $75 million in new money every year for children's unmet needs. I know that Mayor Teresa Jacobs has not really been on board with this. In right. fact, she said taxing the people who are ultimately trying to be affected by this amount of money, mm. that's the wrong way to go about it. Mm. Uh, essentially saying that these low-income families, this would be a huge burden on them if mm. they had to pay this tax. What's your response to that? Well, the, the mayor and the county commission have voted more than one time to put on the ballot a tax increase. And in fact, just recently they put a full mill for the schools on the ballot for the third time in the last several years. So the question really is a philosophical one. Should the public have an opportunity to vote on this? Mm -hmm. And our contention is yes. In fact, we did a poll, 82% of the people polled said, look, we deserve the right to vote on this, mm. not the government make the decision for us. So we're basically saying, and our, kind of our point of um, disagreement is that the mayor 
as opposed to an independent tasking district, we think it works very, very well. It's been around for 32 years. Eight counties in Florida had it. Every municipal uh, metropolitan area has one in Florida. It works very, very well. Uh, we just disagree on the approach. We disagree on, we think more money is needed for children, not less. Mm -hmm. And we believe that a permanent funding source is the best way to go. But more importantly, let the public decide. Let the voters decide on don't keep it off the ballot, you know, and Thomas Jefferson said the safest repository for a democracy is, is, in the, is in the hands of a free and informed public. Let the public decide. Some of those other issues that would be targeted along with mental health, like you mentioned, uh, would be support early learning programs. Right, precisely. That's one issue that, that seems to be a problem. Subsidize child care for low-income families. Mm -hmm. Um, some after-school programs and mm -hmm. job training mm -hmm. for youth. The good thing about the Children's Services Council is the first statutory responsibility they have once they are appointed is to do a needs assessment, a gap analysis, look at the programs that work, and supplement the programs that work. Don't supplant programs, okay? Supplement programs. Let's see if we can demonstrate that we are moving the needle. Mm -hmm. In uh, Day County, for instance, they uh, were able to get employed some 1,500, I think it was, young people in the school system during the summer programs off the street employed, paycheck coming in with some subsidies from the private sector. So there are lots of ways to do it, but early childhood education is so critical. Uh, they have pointed out that 3,400 people on the waiting list for that. Mm -hmm. That's about $17 million alone, but we know if we don't provide these children early childhood education, before the third or fourth grade, we will lose a lot of those kids. But again, we're trying to be preventative up front, cost avoidance, invest the money now, save the money later. So a lot of teachers have, have said that kids who come in, especially from the low income families who have not been through that early learning program, are not ready for kindergarten when that time Absolutely. comes. Is that something that you're Absolutely. seeing as well? And also, as I'm pointing out, there are 7,000 children in the public school system who are homeless. Mm -hmm. And uh, J.P. Morgan Chase did a study as, the impact, as to the impact of the homelessness on a child in the public school system. And it's very predictable. Uh, those kids, if we do not provide some housing for those kids and get some of them are on the, some are, are couch surfing and living with friends and families, mm -hmm. but there's some who literally are at the homeless coalition, some are actually on the street. But obviously, if we do not provide services to those kids, a, a good number of them will drop out of the public school system. They'll never be educated, they'll never be trained, they'll never end the workforce, they'll never be productive. And coming up, Mr. Bachelor responds to Mayor Jacobs' concerns and the key endorsement the campaign received from a candidate running to be Florida's next governor. Keep it here.